Hello, hello. Welcome to todebate.net. I am Sebastian and my co-host is Dirk. How are you today? I'm as usual. Perfectly well. Terrific. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, fantastic. So that, that we, we, we are we are so a cliche. Two Europeans trying to not sound American when they just want to say we feel fantastic. We are amazingly well. No, I'm no, I, so good. <laughs> I said fantastic, not awesome. So that's why we're different from Americans. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. No. Let, and, seriously, and I'm feeling very well. I'm glad to see that you feel well too. You, you mean you're glad to see that I'm alive? Yes. I do feel better after some uh, unfortunate surgery, uh, and that's not a joke. But um, yeah, I'm back. Well, I am uh, half I'm joking when I say you got your lungs removed, but uh, you convinced me that you might have still some lung power left because you're clearly talking to me right now. Uh, I do have my brain left, uh, <laughs> but the question is, do I need oxygen for my brain or not? That was the question we were debating <laughs> off the record. <laughs> before this recording of this <laughs> podcast and uh we went into some interesting discussions yeah that, that i yes. see your brain is really a phenomenon without oxygen it <laughs> even works better than with oxygen i had a friend visit me at the hospital uh we were talking about some uh, app concept and uh he sent a, a, an email to my mum afterwards and he said uh, just to give an update on my health because i was like completely uh, drowsy and he said uh, it was good to see sebastian he's doing much better initially he was very tired but after two hours of discussion i could see he was like picking up sp steam but overall it was good because at least for once he was not speaking too too fast for my dr for my brain to cope uh, with everything he was talking about so i guess there is some uh, good advantage of uh, there's some advantage of me uh, being in uh, in a hospital or on drugs it seems I speak more slowly and I'm also a bit out of breath today uh, because of that surgery. So maybe I'll speak at the same pace as you do. Yeah, that's, that's that good. Is, I'm, I'm more a slow six, speaker. Six yeah, as we know, I'm, I'm a thoughtful speaker. That's how I like to frame it. <laughs> anyway, we have a debate uh, today and the motion is it's worth having a Trump. Trump like Donald Trump. Yeah, so, I got to ask, you mean... Junior or senior Trump this time? Well, you never know. It could be the entire family by, by all we know. And by the time we re release this episode, there will be another Trump in the mix. So uh, it seems to never, the story never seems to end. The flip of the coin, because as usual, we decide who's going to take which side by the flip of a coin. So, um, Dirk, you are going to be against the motion. So you're going to say it is not worth having a Trump while I will be in favor of it. Also, the flip of the coin has made it such that you will start the debate. So it's whenever you're ready. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Trump, is it worth having one? Um, the president, we mean, of course, not Trump Jr., whether it's the first one or second one, not the other Trumps. I mean Donald Trump, president of the United States. And what I'll not do, what the typical Sebastian tactic would be, is I'm not going to scare my listeners into uh, painting pictures of Trump causing a world war or um, being somehow, I don't know, killing democracy or whatnot. Uh, I come from another angle. I'm, I won't demonize Trump. As, I'm, as much as I hope different, I actually think he's here to stay. And I think he often does not mean half as bad as it looks from his actions. Most of the time I credit it to not knowing any better, which in itself is, may make him less dangerous than we think he is. That said, what scares me is that he clearly has no clue how to run complex operations. His whole life he got away with simple statements, provocations, and he still does. So you look at that and you wonder when does it stop? And it, he seemed to get away with everything he does. Nobody seemed to really have a handle on him. But the truth of the matter is, as CEO of Trump Incorporated, his actions had relatively little impact. 
We all could simply ignore the guy. No one died. No one ended up in jail. And if in jail, then it was maybe not the kind of person that uh, endangers democracies. And he did not inspire the world to overstep boundaries or throw, throw out morale to, to score cheap points. All these things happen right now since he is in power and the quote-unquote leader of the free world. Now his actions, in fact, do kill. They cost lives and they already cost lives. Actions like not having enough people in important agencies, for instance. Actions like uh, inspiring leaders to step up their, their war games. So... I will go in more detail on each of these points, but indeed, I think it's dangerous to have a Trump. It's not worth it. The moral price and the price for us on the world is too high. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. With Trump, life has just become so entertaining, so extreme. There is just no true risk. I mean, look. It forces everyone to have an opinion. Look, everyone talks about Trump. On Twitter, I talk, I mean, I, I'm not talking on behalf of Trump. Trump is this modern president. He makes himself more approachable. It's, he's just like tweeting all the time. He's so good at it. He just like tweets all the time about everything. In fact, just, and I'm serious about this. It forces everyone afterwards, afterwards to have a very clear opinion for or against him. Up to now, everyone's like so PC, so politically correct. And now it forces people to maybe be more professional. Trump, if anything, is such an idiot that it forces everyone else afterwards to be very clear on what they need to do to fix things. Because up to now, honestly, and that happens everywhere around the world, and, that, and that's the exact reason why Trump is elected, everyone has a very poor opinion of politicians. So now, because it becomes such a disaster, he's actually very useful because after him, you can ex expect things to be so much cleaner. Trump, in a way, will become exactly like other pre presidents or other major U.S. figures in U.S. history. McCarthy, Nixon, right? They have left um, uh, nouns and adjectives behind them, right? You say McCarthyism, Nixonism. You'll have Trumpism. It will be a very negative word, so negative that everyone will actually feel that everything is much better afterwards. In a way, and I'll be positive about Trump right now, it's also refreshing to see that outsiders can reach power outside of mainstream political parties, like Macron in, Fr in France. Trump was not a Republican, homegrown Republican. He just managed to get the nomination from the party. But it was refreshing to see that someone who had not the backing initially could actually reach power. So in many ways, he's a very useful idiot. And I have more arguments for my second piece. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. Your argument is weird, Sebastian. It's a little bit like now we have we are forced to have a stand for or against gun control now that the toddler finally has his hands on a on a on a machine gun now we are forced to think what direction is he holding the thing and whether or not he will pull the trigger that's just not how we should run our world and how we should run our political systems and you also yes while i agree that uh, trump indeed is entertaining It's only entertaining if you sit in Europe, are employed in a relatively uh, well-paying job, have health insurance and watch it on cable TV. It's much less entertaining if you're either member of a society that now has to be scared of uh, being, well, uh, run over by one of Trump's stupid economic policies Or if you're somebody who cares for his uh, relatives that may not be completely legally in the United States and bear on path of citizenship under Obama. Or if you're somebody who cannot afford um, her, his or her health insurance and now will have no chance to afford his or her health insurance under Trump. It's much less entertaining for them. And this is, this is one of the costs that I was mentioning. What is his childish behavior? What is his childish tantrums actually uh, leading to? His, his war with the press leads to people not believing in the news anymore. 
You can say maybe that's healthy. Maybe the news uh, has a fair share of that to carry. Might, may that be as it is. But uh, also, nobody believes it anymore. Means people believe whatever they like and they follow pretty stupid uh, um, media now. Um, yes, he is a master of social media. He tweets his dumb tweet every morning and uh, the whole world pays attention. This is time, energy, money spent on tweets of a grandpa who, who thinks the world is easy to fix and he has all the recipes. If we could spend that energy on solving real issues and real problems, we would be better off. And I, that's what I mean when I say the costs are too high. I don't think he will lead us into into a world war. I don't think he will. Uh, he he won't kill anybody around my social circles. But he's bad for his people. He's bad for all of us. He costs a ton of money, and all that leads to is uh, basically more weapons on this planet, less money distributed, uh, more unequal than before. And somebody else who has to clean up the mess this guy is producing right now. So I think it's not worth the cost. It's uh, actually quite sad, even if it's funny. Most funny things, most truly funny things have a pretty sad side attached to it. And uh, yes, that's why I maintain my position. Not worth it. And now on to Sebastian. Let me correct a few things. You say he tweets in the morning. It's not true. He tweets, he tweets at night at three o'clock in the morning. That's the night, not exactly the morning. Um, let's be very clear on that. Uh, in fact, the president of the United States, like most presidents in democ democratic societies, do not have that much power. And you can see where the health bill has not been able to pass yet. His immigration ban has been mostly rejected. So actually, he's got very little power. And my expectations when you say that he's going to get away with everything is not I don't think it's accurate. We will see. Time will tell. But my prediction is that he's going to get impeached um, or something will happen. So he'll be removed from power. But in the meantime, he's still beneficial for the reasons I mentioned. And you said, you know, yeah, okay, it's funny. And it's as if you're watching this from cable TV in Europe. Well, at least cable TV is expensive. We have to pay for it. And Trump, it's free. You get, you can go, to, you can listen to him every day. You get free entertainment. You don't even have to pay for cable TV. Uh, let me go back to a few points, because half of what I say is serious, half of it is funny, or tries to be funny. Uh, but here's the thing. We talk about news, and I think it puts the spotlight on something which happened even before Trump. Fake news or lies. And it, the good thing, what it does now, is journalists go back to what journalism should be, and that's investigation. I'm sorry, but there's very little meat, very little press that exists that is truly investigate, 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 and I can't say the word that focuses on investigation. So I think that is actually also beneficial for the media itself. They will have to look and dig into the details and see which are the lies. There's one thing which I think we need to give credit to someone like Trump, however much I dislike the guy. He actually does what he said he would do. And that's a surprise to people. The people get surprised that for once, there's someone who gets elected and actually says he's going to build the wall. With Mexico, however crazy it sounds, that he's going to close the borders. He actually wants to do it. That he's going to repel Obamacare. Yes, he's actually trying to do that. And I think people get surprised that for once, people do what they say they would do. And I think that's very beneficial because people now, from now on, will make these elected people uh, more accountable. Also, uh, what else do I have here? There's one more thing, which I think it goes to his credit. It's a clear messaging. Now, I've been working in a, num a number of companies. Google, the one we work for, is the only one I know the mission statement of. In all the companies before, I had no idea what the vision or the mission of the company was. And Trump does the same thing for America. Everyone has heard, make America great again. It's the US first and every other country second. So people make fun of it. There's tons of very funny YouTube videos about this. But he managed to do one thing. It's to rally everyone in the U.S. around one clear messaging. And that's very unique. It's very special because it actually brings people together. However much people dislike him, he manages to do that, which is very powerful. So I think all in all, he actually brings some interesting perspective on politics, even though he comes from a very negative angle. And he'll be out of power soon enough. So we'll just get the, the good from him and all the bad will soon go away. 
final statements. Dirk, let's hear it. So you corrected me. Let me correct you. He was not the first one to rally the US behind uh, a slogan. And make America great again was not even his slogan. He stole them from other presidents. So, I, and I'm, I don't see the good in rallying America behind a very selfish, very nationalistic and pretty stupid slogan, to be honest. But yes, to his credit, he rallied them behind that slogan. Or he made everybody position him or herself for against it. The other point you made, for once a politician is doing what he promised to do. Well, he's not. Not a single one of the things he promised to do actually came to be so far. And there's a good reason for it. They are all stupid. There's building a wall to Mexico and Mexico pays for it in a world where people board planes. I mean, it's not a single thing. The only thing he really pressed, uh, pressed through by now is his Muslim ban. And that's just plain racism and yes he's not the first politician who does racist things and said before and did afterwards so no no it's actually not worth having him it's pretty sad the thing that we keep laughing about it that's for venting it's not healthy and uh i i would by now i would even take bush back i have to say that that was an intellectual compared to trump sebastian I don't know if you heard the latest, but the wall needs to be transparent as well. I don't know if you read the news this morning when we were recording this, because he says, if a Mexican drug dealer throws some 60 kilos or pounds of drug over the wall, you need to see where it's coming from. Otherwise, it could fall on your head. Uh, that's, I think, what he meant to say this morning. I don't know if it was a joke or not, but um, I found this very funny. Uh, back to your point. Just to correct a few things, uh, Islam is not a race, right? So it's not a racist uh, ban that he's trying to do, but that's uh, another debate. Another debate, which we're not doing right now, is whether it's a selfish move to say, make America great again, because we have borders. Every politician will be selfish at some point. So another debate is, do we need to have borders? And we had some uh, related uh, debates. It's not his messaging, you say? Well, to his credit, he made it his own. And everyone thinks it is his messaging. So he's very good at that as well. Right? He maybe introduces some business-like attitude to politics, which is, I think is much needed. Um, and finally, I'm going to say, you don't need to pay for Netflix anymore. You have House of Cards, but so much more entertaining and real uh, just on TV and Twitter. So come on. I mean, for all the reasons I mentioned, it's entertaining, but also, I think, refreshes things and cleans things from the journalism perspective, from politics perspective. And hopefully, he will be gone soon. So all the benefits that I've tried to list in this debate Will, will remain. Let's see. Let's see. I may be wrong, but that's what I'm trying to uh, argue for today. So that's it. That was today's debate. It's worth having a Trump. What do you think, dear listener? Is it worth having a Trump? Let us know. You can leave a comment on the page. You can go to Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, what have you. We are everywhere. And uh, we are eager to hear what your position is or whether or not we convinced you or what arguments we could have used to win you over to our side. It was a lot of fun, Sebastian, to debate this with you and uh, hope you recover soon from your lung surgery. Thank you. It was great fun too. Thank you very much, listeners, and uh, stay tuned for the next Bye. episode. Bye-bye. Hello, Sebastian. Do I need to ask you what side you're really on? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Actually, when I when I think about the debate uh, formulation, the motion formulation, we said worth having a Trump. The thing is, that there is already a Trump. So the, the debate could have been, it's worth having had a Trump. that makes the media uh, more responsible. They have to make a decision. 
Are we just going to report on what's going on, the day-to-day -day annoying, boring details? Or are we really going to investigate and try to bring a president down if it's necessary? The question is, can they? Because the, the war on press that Trump started basically led to many, many, many people not believing anything anymore that they see in the press. There is such an incredible amount of wrongdoing already that, that should have ended it like months ago. And yet he still seemed to be allowed to carry on. And he still seemed to be untouched by that. And it was like Trump, the, his entire career was like that. He has a trail of bankruptcies behind him. He had more than 4,000, take this, more than 4,000 lawsuits that this guy was involved in. This is just unbelievable. And uh, will it send a shock to the system? Maybe. Is it worth having another shock to the system? Please not. Well, what does it tell you about the justice system? For me, it tells me two things. Number one is, um, maybe something's broken, and at least he allows um, everyone to notice that. Right? Um, and actually, I, I realized I forgot one of my arguments was to say, maybe it will force people to rethink the balance of power between the various, you know, like, you know, the debate about popular vote versus uh, indirect democracy for the presidential elections. Maybe it will, it will make people rethink about how they should appoint the judges at the Supreme Court in the US. I don't know. Uh, it just introduces a debate.